Lord, praise the Lord. We're so glad to come to you today during this Facebook Live moment, this hour. Amen. I hope you invite somebody to come. We wanted to come out a little bit earlier, but uh, our working about kept us a little busy and we were not able to get on as fast as we would like. So we had to delay our coming, but nevertheless, we're here. Amen. Praise the Lord. I'm so glad you're tuning in. Why don't you uh, invite somebody? Why don't you swipe, if you will, um, share it, come on in, praise God. So glad you're here. Uh, Sister Sharon, why don't you invite somebody to come and join you? Come on, tell somebody, send, uh, uh, send it into a group, send it on your on your post, on your, on your, on your feed. Amen. Praise the Lord. Brother Cedric Bynum. I'm so glad you're here. So glad you're here in Jesus name. Amen. Brother Milton. So glad you're checking in with us today. Praise God. Why don't you invite somebody? Those of you that are there, it's okay to say hello. Glory to God. We want to just take a few minutes today and give our friends an opportunity to catch up with us. Amen. I'm going to do a little old song, a little old simple old school praise. Glory to God. I'm going to do it today with no music. As you can see, I'm in another section for a moment. But there's an old song that goes, I'm so glad Jesus lifted me. I'm so glad Jesus lifted me. I'm so glad Jesus lifted me. Singing glory, hallelujah. Jesus lifted me. I'm so glad Jesus lifted me. I'm so glad Jesus lifted me. I'm so glad Jesus lifted me. Singing glory, hallelujah. Jesus lifted me. Satan had me bound, but Jesus made me free. Satan had me bound, but Jesus made me free. Satan had me bound, Jesus made me free. Singing glory, hallelujah, Jesus made me free. Well, when I was in sin, Jesus lifted me. When I was in sin, Jesus lifted me. When I was in sin, Jesus lifted me. Singing glory, hallelujah. Jesus lifted me. Well, I'm so glad Jesus lifted me. I'm so glad Jesus lifted me. I'm so glad Jesus lifted me. Singing glory, hallelujah. Jesus lifted me. Where aren't you glad Jesus lifted you? Aren't you glad he lifted you too? Are you glad Jesus lifted you? Singing glory, hallelujah. Jesus lifted you. Well, I'm so glad Jesus lifted me. Well, I'm so glad Jesus lifted me. Well, I'm so glad Jesus lifted me, singing glory, hallelujah, Jesus, he lifted, he lifted me, yeah. he lifted my heavy burden, hallelujah, he lifted me, hey, my shataba, hallelujah, he lifted my heavy burden. He lifted me. He lifted my heartache. Yes, he did. Jesus lifted me. Hallelujah. He lifted my heavy spirit. Yes, he did. Jesus lifted me. Hallelujah. Glory. Hallelujah. Jesus lifted me. That's an old school praise and worship. I'm so glad Jesus lifted me. Aren't you glad? Praise God. Aren't you glad Jesus lifted me. I'm so glad he lifted me. I was watching uh, a movie called Jesus. Uh, uh, 
I think it's Jesus of Nazareth, if I remember correctly, where he's healing. Uh, no, Risen is the title of the movie. If you guys haven't seen the movie, it's an older movie titled Risen. You ought to go watch that movie or you ought to purchase the movie. It's on DVD now, Blu-ray, Risen. And it was amazing that uh, the, the prophetess Mary Magdalene, who, Magdalene, pardon me, who Jesus had cast out seven demons. And of course, he filled her with the power of the Holy Ghost and he called her to be a prophetess. And so they called her in and uh, the soldier, the centurion asked her, why would you follow this Nazarene? Why would you? follow this Jesus. She said, even though I'm an old lady, he, he lifted me. I don't know if you understand what that woman, my soul. See, I think I got some witnesses that understand what I'm talking about. The, the girl said, you don't understand why I'm following, but I'm going to tell you that even though I'm an old lady, she said, he, he lifted me. Hallelujah. My God, today, you might wonder why I'm glad. Listen, I'm not just happy because it's Friday. You know, some folk get excited on Friday because it's payday. You know, thank God it's Friday. Just got paid. What's that boy name? You sing that old song. No, no, no. I'm not excited just because of Friday because of payday. No, I'm happy because Jesus lifted me. My God, today, I was seeking deep in sin for from the peaceful shore, very deeply staying within, and I was sinking my brothers and sisters to rise no more, but the master of the sea, he heard my despairing cry, and from the waters, he lifted me, now safe am I, listen, he lifted me, glory to God, hallelujah, I was down in the dumps, you ever been down in the dumps, I was down in the dumps, but Jesus, he ha, my shatabaya, Hey, hallelujah, glory to God. He lifted me. Hallelujah, glory to God. I was heavy laden, my God, today. I was burdened. I couldn't shoulder the weight of my burden. They were getting too heavy, my brothers and sisters. But Jesus, that Christ, he... <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. He lifted me, my beloved. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Listen, life sometimes got rough on me, and, and, and I start feeling like I was sinking. It looked like the harder I would kick, the deeper I would sink. It was like starting to feel like quicksand. My God, today, looked like my steps were getting heavy. My God, today, and it seemed like the harder I would try to fight to get out of trouble, to get out of my a uh, hole, to get out of that dilemma, to get out of that condition of life, to get out of that heaviness, to get out of that sad sack, out of that sorrow, out of that grief, and look like he just reached down, and just in the simplicity of his awesome glory, he just, whoosh, ah, I better stop talking about that, I'm gonna mess around and get it unseemly on here, my God, today, I don't have nowhere to run. My God, I've closed myself in here for this Facebook Live. I'm telling you, if I don't stop talking about his goodness, I'll mess around and get unseemly. Glory to God. Hallelujah. He lifted me. Well, I welcome you to this beautiful broadcast live today on Facebook. I'm so glad you're here. I know you guys are very important people. You're VIPs, and I know that you have very important things to do and other important people to spend time with. I want to tell you thank you for taking times out of your busy schedule to spend it with Apostle Donald Thompson, and I believe by the Holy Ghost we won't disappoint. I am not a Facebook pastor. I am an authentic apostle, an authentic bishop, and a pastor, overseer, but I do like to come on Facebook and share with my brothers and sisters. I know there are many uh, leaders, many apostles, and many prophets, and many prophetesses, and there's many pastors, and many teachers, many great evangelists, many great people of God that come and listen to me. Some of them might not say nothing, but they're listening, because see, not everybody can have somebody that ministers to their spirit. You see, a lot of people pour out to others, but they hardly have anybody to pour in. I said they pour out, but then you got to have somebody to pour in. And I thank God for being so gracious and so kind that he permits me, glory to God, 
to pour into you at times. You know, it's just like God. He always did take nothing and use it, didn't he? <laughs> he stepped on the space of nothing and made everything. I'm going to stop. I'm trying to I'm trying to get to the subject matter at hand. I'm trying to stop talking. I feel talkative in the Holy Ghost. And when the Holy Ghost start talking, he starts to walk. And we're going to start shouting and acting unseemly. I promise you, if we were in time inside part of a church setting, we'd probably be running right now. We'd probably be shouting and cutting up. Glory to God. Giving God some glory and giving him some praise. Good to see my big sister, Sister Sandra McLaughlin on today. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Bless you, baby. Hallelujah. I hope Larry typed in too. Well, let's get underway. Let's get to the meat of the message. I thank my deacon, Deacon Lampkins, for he wanted to bring me some, uh, Deacon brought me some power aid today. He said I was working hard. He was kind. Amen. Praise the Lord. So we're going to talk today a little bit, and I believe God is going to bless us on this Facebook Live. I wanted to come to you a little bit earlier, but my work was a little extensive, and so I couldn't come right away. Thank you so much for the love and the heart. My big brother, Jeffrey LaValle, you better quit. You Boy, it's not my birthday, and it's not Christmas. My God. <laughs> Oh, God, I feel so blessed. Hallelujah. My God. Well, today, we're going to go, if you will, if you'll go with me in your Bibles to James, our Lord, uh, Jesus' half-brother, James. James, we're going to James chapter number two. Hallelujah. Big brother say we got something to run and shout about. He's a mighty God. Yes, he is. Don't you start nothing on Hill of Valley. I'm trying. I just told the folk I'm trying to behave. And now you go trying to start. Hallelujah. Don't make me howl on here, my God, today. Glory to his name. We're going to the book of the Apostle James. James, we're going to chapter number two. And for starters, I'm going to just read in your hearing one verse. And you know I'm reading from the King James translation of the Holy Bible. We're going to James. Chapter number two, I'm going to read in your hearing verse number 19 is what we're going to talk about tonight. James chapter number two, that's in your New Testament scripture, just right after the book of Hebrews, far, far left in your Bible if you're a babe or if you're just starting out in the Bible or if you're not that well versed in the Bible, go all the way to the right and Listen, there are some people that really don't know where it is. I, I minister to people on all levels. I minister to some apostles and bishops and some people with PhDs. And I minister to some people who say, well, I don't understand. Where is that at? And guess what? We've got to be able to love on everybody. Amen. So when I say that, I'm not being facetious or arrogant or cocky or proud. I'm, I'm, I'm being considerate that there might be someone watching that don't, that does not know their Bible so well. So we never want to take it for granted. Amen. Because our purpose is to be a blessing. Well, okay. James chapter number two, I'm reading in your hearing one verse, verse number 19. And I am reading from the King James translation of the Holy Bible. The word of the Lord reads, thou believest that there is one God. Thou doest well. The devils also believe and tremble. But wilt thou know, O vain man, that faith without works is dead? Was not Abraham our father justified by works? When he had offered Isaac his son upon the altar, seest thou how faith wrought with works, and by works was faith made perfect? And the scripture was fulfilled which saith, Abraham believed God, and it was imputed unto him for righteousness. And he was called the friend of God. That got me excited right there. My God today. If I can look one more time at verse 19, it says, Thou believest that there is one God, thou doest well. The devils also believe and tremble. And to sum it up, 
Verse number 23 said the scripture was fulfilled which said Abraham believed God and it was imputed unto him for righteousness and he was called the friend of God. I want to talk for a few minutes from the thought let's go deeper in Christ Jesus. Let's go deeper in Christ Jesus. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this moment. We've come together. Thank you for all my brothers and sisters who came to hear us today. We pray in the name of Jesus. God, you know I'm absolutely codependent on you. Father, I need you to commandeer my mouth. Give me the opening of the mouth that I might speak a word in season. Ah, Masha Tabaya Nananamo Simandiaso to the hearers in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord God, stretch your hand and bind the work of the devil. Rebuke every diabolical scheme of the adversary, everything that would come to hinder, everything that would come to distract, everything and anything that would come to disrupt. Father, give us the hearing of the ear that we might hear what the Spirit of God is saying to the church. We'll be ever careful to give you the praise and take no credit for what you do or say, for thine is the glory, O God. Thank God. Amen. Amen. Let's go deeper. In Christ Jesus. In Ephesians chapter 3, around verse 18, Paul said that you would know uh, the height, the width, and the breadth, and the depths. We want to go deeper. The interesting thing is almost the statement is kind of like an oxymoron. Because when we go deeper in Christ Jesus, we're actually going higher in the Holy Ghost. Ha <laughs> ha. My sha, my dio, my ha, hey, sha, my God. I said, when we go deeper in Christ Jesus, we're actually going higher in the Holy Ghost, higher, elevated in the things of the Spirit. It is time for us who call ourselves Christians, believers, followers of Jesus Christ. It's time for us to go deeper in the Lord Jesus. It's time to go deeper. It's time for us to go deeper in Christ Jesus. My beloved brothers and sisters, you see, uh, it is important for us to understand that there is so much more to Christ than just when you got born again, when you got baptized. Let's go deeper. It's so much more to knowing Christ Jesus and having a relationship with him than just merely talking about what denomination of church you're in. It's so much more, so much deeper, so much more to offer in Christ Jesus, my beloved brothers and sisters, than the mere fact that you got a buck. You know what I'm saying? Listen, I'm not against the buck. I'm all for the buck. I buck. Listen, I truck and buck. Running. Come on, leaping for joy, shouting, glorifying God. But I've got so many brothers and sisters, beautiful people of God, men and women, young and old, middle-aged, tall and short, fat and skinny, dark skin and light skin, Caucasian and Mexican-American, Chinese and Japanese, Russian and Bangladeshians and, come on, Canadians and Germans, all kind of folk, Japanese. Chinese, Vietnamese, Pakistanians, Indians, all kind of folk who have come to a place in Christ and they feel that they have become somewhat stagnant in these last and evil days. There's so much going on in our country nowadays to sometimes it's 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 troubling. It, it it can if you really have a heart for God, if you really have a heart for God's people, many of the things going on around this country is really heartbreaking. It's it's gut wrenching, it's 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 mind boggling, it's troubling, you know. You you all the murdering going on in every place and seem like Hardly many really care. As long as I've got my abode and my bills are paid and uh, I've got food to eat, I'm not concerned with what everybody else is going through. It's not my problem. Let somebody else handle that problem. But it's time for the church of the living God to go deeper in Christ Jesus. 
Even the Satan and all of his demons believe. Some people feel like as long as I believe, I'm good. You ever heard that old slang? When they say I'm good, that means they feel like they've arrived. They say I'm good, they feel like they don't need any more. If they say I'm good, they feel like they're at fruition. If they say I'm good, they feel like they're at full maturity. You've ever heard somebody say that? But the Bible says in James chapter number 2, verse number 19, that if thou believest there's one God you do well, but even the devils in hell, I'm going to add hell, even the devils believe and they tremble. So the devil, Satan, and his demons belief in the true God is so powerful, it's so sure that they tremble at the name of Jesus Christ. Do you tremble? Do you believe that strongly? That the name of Jesus sometimes make you tremble. You know we're near. We're coming up on what they call Palm Sunday. And it makes me think. Brother LaValle. I know Brother LaValle would know this song. Because he's a phenomenal musician. I know you remember that song. Were you there when they crucified my Lord? Oh, causes me to tremble. Were you there? Were you there? When, when they crucified my Lord, hallelujah. Do it, does it cause you to tremble? When you get in the word of God, do you ever read your Bible and it makes you tremble? Have you ever uh, experienced the Lord, not in a horrific way, but in a good way? Has, has the Lord ever done something for you and your family and it made you tremble just thinking about what he done. Oh, 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 what he done for me. Oh, 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 what he done for me. Have you ever had an experience with the Lord that it made you tremble? It was so powerful. If it has not happened for you, it's got to happen to you. It's time for you to go deeper, my beloved. Because even the devils believe and tremble. I don't know about you, but I'm not going to let a demon beat me. I'm not going to let Satan beat me. Everybody that have good sense worships God. Watch it. The Bible says in James chapter 2 verse 19 that even the devils believe and tremble. Just because you believe there's one God, James the apostle said you do well. And this is a powerful pragmatic message from the apostle James who was the half brother of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Biblical history records that James, even though he was Mary's son, he did not accept and receive nor believe that Jesus was the son of God, the Savior of the world. Not until after his brother died on Calvary and rose again the third day. He said, ooh. So he recognized that just believing, finally believing is not enough. Finally believing. And I believe this pragmatic uh, passage of scripture here is telling us that we need to learn how to apply some action with our faith. We don't need to just talk a good game. We need to walk that game. Come on. We don't need to just uh, uh, talk about it. We need to live it. Come on. We need to. We don't need to just uh, uh, give information. We need to give a manifestation because if all we give is information, then all the people get is perspiration because they're trying in their flesh to work it up. But if we start doing a demonstration, then the people can have a manifestation, meaning that the Spirit of God will begin to move on things in our lives. And then this world, this mundane world, this God forsaking world, this Jesus Christ rejecting world, this Holy Ghost refusing world, even the religious world that rejects the Holy Ghost, they can start to believe and know that our God is real and that he reigns and he rules in the kingdom of men. Even Satan and all his demons believe. James 2.19 says, he goes on to say, but will thou know? God wants you to go deeper. He wants you to go deeper. Watch it. He wants you to go deeper. It's a hidden revelation about Thomas. Thomas, it, 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 many preachers, theologians over the years called him Doubt and Thomas. But the interesting thing to me, I believe Doubt and Thomas, as they call him, Thomas represent, he was one of the 12 disciples. He represents most of us. How does he represent most of us? Because uh, 
you know, they used to sing the song, when I see Jesus, amen. When I see the one that died for me, the one on Calvary, amen. In other words, uh, uh, Thomas was uh, appreciative that his brethren say, hey, man, we seen the Lord. He's risen from the dead. Hey, man, we saw his nail prints. Hey, man, Thomas say, good for you. I want to see him for myself. Come on. I want to know him for myself. I want to touch him for myself. Come on. I want to feel him for myself. Don't you? <laughs> I told you Thomas represents you. So watch it. Another level of going deeper in Christ is from the level of merely just believing to the level of knowing. That's the second level. The first level in the depths of Christ is believing. But even the demons believe on the lower level and they tremble. The next level is knowing. He said, but will thou know, O vain man, worthless man, that faith without works is dead? What is he saying? You see, you can believe, but you can't know until you be willing to move out. It's like when Peter was fishing all night and he told the Lord, I've been fishing. We've been fishing all night, haven't caught nothing. And Jesus told him what? He said, Peter, launch out into the deep and let your net down for a drought. Now, if he believed what the Lord said, he would never, if he, if he believed, he'd move out into the deep, which he did. And many people say they believe, but they don't move. They don't put action behind their conversation. They can talk a good game. They know the Bible from kiva to kiva. They know scriptures uh, verbatim. They have a superlative, magniloquent syntax. They can baffle scholars and science. They can use deep dissertations and great swelling words, but they've never really had a genuine experience with the Holy Ghost. He said, well, you know, old man, old vain man, that faith without works is dead. Do you not know that you act like you're dead if you say you believe Christ, but you've never moved in the things of God, things of the spirit of God? Do you not know that if you say you know Christ Jesus, but you've never uh, gone after the Holy Ghost, you've never tried to go higher in the things of God, you haven't read your Bible and desired to see God glory, to see his presence and his power. If you have not, you need to go deeper. Faith without works is dead. If you're not trying to experience God, you're operating with a dead faith. Because a live faith always wants to experience the glory of God's presence. He says here, he said, was Abraham our father justified by works when he offered Isaac, his son, up on the altar? What is he saying? Now, we know that uh, Ephesians, I don't want you to be confused here. Let me bring clarity. Ephesians 2, uh, uh, 5 says, uh, for the just shall live by his faith. Then we get to verse 8, 9 that we're familiar with. It says, uh, for by uh, grace are you saved through faith. It is the gift of God, pardon me, not of yourselves, not of works, lest any man should boast. So don't get confused at what the Bible is saying here. You see, he's not telling you in James, he's not saying that you're going to work your way into salvation. That's not what James is talking about here. But he told you that if you don't apply some action with your faith, you, you're operating with dead faith, dormant faith. You're operating with faith that cannot produce for you. You're operating with a faith, faith that won't bring fruit. You're operating with a faith that, that'll cheat you from God's best. Glory to God. If you need healing in your body, you got to be willing to operate in the faith of the Son of God. You've got to be willing to apply the scriptures. Glory to God. And really trust God. Hallelujah. Really go after him. See, Abraham believed God. How do you know he believed God? Because he said, God, I believe you. And he started doing what God asked him to do. It was foolish what God asked him to do. God, I've asked for this promise for a hundred years. And when you finally give it to me, right at 99 years, you give it to me. And then as soon as you give it to me, you're going to take it away. That's foolish. But nevertheless, I trust you. 
And because of it, God said, now I know you believe God. And he saved him and his son. See, God will save you and your health. He'll save you and your strength. He'll save you and your business, you and your husband, you and your wife, you and your children, you and your job. You Come on, he'll save you and your gift, you and your talent. He'll save you. He'll rescue you if you believe God. He's always a God trying to give us more than enough. He's always a God giving us more than we ask for. He's always a God that is ready and able to do exceeding abundantly above. So watch it. He says in verse 22, seest thou how faith wrought with his works and by works was faith made perfect. Your faith is perfected by your activity in the kingdom. You have to begin to do things that uh, will build your faith like building your muscles. You never work out. Your muscles will never get swollen. If you never go jogging or walking, you'll never build up your respiratory system. Your leg muscles won't get any stronger. Faith has to be operable. Faith has to be working. You have to work your faith. Ha. Verse 23, he says, and the scripture was fulfilled. Do you not know, my beloved brothers and sisters, that God wants to fulfill the scriptures in each one of us? I said, do you not know, my beloved brothers and sisters, that Almighty God wants to fulfill the word of God in your life, in your situation, in your circumstance, in your heart, in your mind, in your battles, in your struggles, in your challenges, in your weakness. God wants to fulfill the word. How is the word fulfilled? By works of faith. When you go after things because the word says it. When you do things because the word says it. When you accept things because the word says it. He says, watch it. The scripture will fulfill, which says Abraham believed God. That's the second level. Remember, we uh, that's the first level, rather, believing God. He believed God. And it was imputed unto him for righteousness sake. And he was called the friend of God. Why? Because God friends always step up to the next level. That second level is when knowing without no man. I've got to get from a level of just believing to knowing. I, I believe God to heal the sick, but if I'm sick in my body, God, I'm ready to know it. Heal me. I'm not satisfied. I'm not, I'm not settling for nothing else. Donnie McClurkin had a song. He said, you told me you would deliver me, and that's what I believe, and that's what I receive. Come on. I'm going, I'm going to get what you told me I could have. That's the next level. See? I don't want to just believe God's a way maker. And then every time I need a way made, I got to call a June bug. I got to call Bessie Boo. No, God, I want to see you. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I want experience for myself. I need to know. So when I tell you, my beloved brothers and sisters, I tell you, Jesus is a healer. I'm telling you, I know. My shot. My see, my dio. How about I see? When I tell you, shut up. When I tell you he's a way maker out of no way, I'm telling you I know for myself. Glory to God. When I tell you he lifted me, glory to God. I'm not telling you just what I heard and what I read. I'm telling you I know. I give him glory. Ah, Masha Tabaya. Hallelujah. I give him praise. I'm telling you I know. Glory to God. Hallelujah. When I tell you he's a mind regulator, I'm telling you I've been troubled out of my mind, but he came and gave me peace, which passes understanding. I'm telling you I know. So Abraham was at the next level of knowing and he became a friend of God. When you get to that level, don't be afraid. Don't feel like, you know, people say, oh, you can't question God. No, don't question God as this, as in the means of second guessing God. Don't question God in the means of like you're trying to uh, belittle God. Don't, don't, don't question God in the means like you're trying to undermine God. But God don't mind you asking him some stuff. Some questions about your life, about your condition, about your situation, about your circumstance. He don't have a problem with you saying, Lord, how long am I going to have to wait for my husband to come? How long am I going to have to wait to find my wife? How long am I going to have to wait for my financial breakthrough? Lord, how long am I going to have to toil with this sickness? God, how long am I going to have to walk around with this heavy burden? How long, God, and before my business bust into the next realm and dimension of where it's supposed to be thriving? How long is my child? church going to struggle? How long is I'm going to have just a handful of folk in my congregation? God, how long? You don't have a problem with that. 
But when you get to the level where you, because you, you, when you do that, you're showing God, thank you, Holy Ghost, that you really believe what his word says. When you say, God, listen, how long are you going to let this sickness sit on your body? Do you, you, God, you do realize this is on your temple. You do realize this is, this sickness is trespassing. God, excuse me. Do you, you do realize that this high blood pressure giving me headache is trespassing. This your head, this your brain. And this, I'm sick of this high blood pressure. Give, come on, making me feel all oozy. This stuff, you didn't tell me your word. I'm supposed to feel oozy unless I'm oozy in the Holy Ghost. God, how long you going to let this diabetes just be fooling with my vision and fooling and making me nausea and, and, and all this stuff, making me lightheaded? If I'm going to be lightheaded, I need to be lightheaded because the power of the Holy Ghost is up on me. God, this is trespassing. Get bold in your faith. Hallelujah. Why? Because the demon just believe and tremble. God wants us to get past just believing and tremble. He wants us to know. How long will you know, O vain man? But will thou know, verse 20 says, O vain man. Stop acting worthless. <laughs> That's what I just heard in the spirit. When we have faith that we don't apply, we make ourselves appear as worthless in the kingdom. Anybody in God's kingdom that will not apply their faith is worthless. You got sick and you can't say, I don't know why this sickness came on me. Because there's somebody in that hospital that need to know that your God reigns and rules in the kingdom of men. There's somebody, there's a nurse, a doctor, there's a tech, there's a, a, a atheist, an unbeliever, there's a weak Christian, a, a one in weak faith that need to know God still healing the sick by you getting your healing. By you getting your breakthrough. Don't just throw in the towel and quit. Then he says finally in verse 24 he said you see then how that works uh, that by works a man is justified and not by faith only. Verse 24 you see then that by works a man is justified and not by faith only. What does it mean to be justified? Now, I know some people like that old corner saying, just as if I never sinned. That's nice. I like that. Okay, that's nice. But no, I want to give you, I want to give you something more pragmatic here. When you get justified, your when you when you when you get justified by works of faith, being justified means to be cleared to receive whatever you need. Oh my God. Oh my God. Woo Shamakasia. Oh my God. To be justified means to be cleared by the heavens to receive from God whatever you need. I just heard somebody say, Oh, I see why I haven't been getting what I need. You need to apply your faith. You need to go forth in the things of God. They're going to look at you funny. Go ahead and look funny. Go on and act like I'm a spectacle. I'm going to get in the aisle and do my dance. I don't understand folk. You know, they be praising God in church. Folk be sitting there with their arm crossed, arm folded, spectating people watching with that foolishness. Man, listen, we went to the club and if we couldn't do nothing but a two-step. You go in church and folk praising God, got a hand lifted. Don't be no spectator. Be a participator. Get in there and lift your hands. Get in there and do your little dance. Glory to God. Get in there and praise the Lord. Apply your faith. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Turn your plate down sometime and don't eat because you fasting unto the Lord. Turn your cup down. Don't let the devil tell you, well, you can't do that because you got medicine to take. The devil is a lie. If I fall sick and they have to rush me to eat all, I can say, Doc, can I have some medicine? They're going to say, no. Doc, can I have a, a sandwich? No. Doc, can I have a cup of water? No. I've got to fast with nothing but saline pumping into my body. And I might sit there for a week or two before they give me a drop of anything. And I'm not going to die. So I don't need to wait and get in a horrible condition to fast. I'm not going to let the devil dictate to me no more. I'm going to apply my faith. I'm not starving myself. I'm going to fast unto the Lord. Let me move on so we can close. Let me move on so we can close. Remember, I'm justified by my works of faith. That means I get in a position. Why am I justified? Thank you, Holy Ghost. 
Thank you, Holy. The Holy Ghost is ministering to me while I'm ministering to you. Thank you, Holy Ghost. See, he just said to me to tell y'all that when you're justified by faith, you become a friend of God. And listen, your friends can ask you for help. Oh, my God. Oh, my God, isn't that so simple and profound? Listen, in other words, when I get justified, I become a friend of God, my God, today. If I'm your friend, I might go knock at your door because I need something. I need something. I need, you know, back in the day when I was a kid, the neighbors would knock and say, hey, ask Miss Thompson if she got two eggs. Ask Sister Thompson if she got some uh, extra stick of butter. Ask Sister Thompson if, if she got a little sugar, a little extra salt. I ran out. You know what I mean? A mama might say, go over there to Miss So-and-so and ask her if she got a grapefruit. You understand me? All the neighbors used to do that to each other. Everybody, you know, the community used to be a community where you could go to your friend and say, hey, I need a little Kool-Aid. You got some Kool-Aid in the package? Girl, I went grocery shopping. I ain't getting no Kool-Aid. You got some Kool-Aid? When you are justified by your works of faith, you become a friend of God. And you've got a right to ask. Glory to God. Hallelujah. The angels, Psalm 104, say, are waiting to ex uh, to excel at the word of God. Hallelujah. When you become a friend of God, you'll begin to speak the word of God into the atmosphere. And the angels will begin to move and begin to orchestrate those things that you need. They'll begin to move and fight a battle for you. Wage a war to your victory. Hallelujah. When you become a friend of God, when your work of faith justifies you, it makes you a friend of God. And when you become a friend of God, you become a favored of God thank you Holy Ghost to get what you need I've got a friend my friend today he say hey apostle how you doing man look I brought you some power aid he say you're working hard he say I know when you when you when you finish working hard you're gonna need something good to drink I say deep 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 you, 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 that's my friend. That's what a friend does for you. See, you, you get into a place of favor where a friend will get you what you need and more than what you need. So you, by faith, my God, today, verse 24 says, you see then how that by works a man is justified. He becomes the friend. Of God. That's what it means to be justified. Can I get you to say I'm a friend of God? He called me friend. Can I get you just, to, can I get some believers? I know I've got some witnesses out there that don't mind boasting in the Lord. David said, my soul make her boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear thereof and be glad. Can I just get a few believers out there that don't mind saying, I'm a friend of God. I'm justified by faith. My works in faith justify me. Glory to God. These signs going to follow them that believe in my name. Hallelujah. They going to speak with new tongues. They going to tread upon scorpions and devils. They going to lay hands on the sick and the sick will recover. They going to tell the devil to get out of town. A new sheriff is in town. My God. They, they going to apply their faith. Glory to God. They going to speak. They going to decree a thing and God establish it. They go forth in these things because they believe what the word says to the point they want to know. They want to see. So a man is justified by his works, and by works was his faith made perfect. And not by faith only, but by his applied work, he becomes a friend of God. He's justified. Let me move on so I can close. So even Satan and all his demons believe. I'm closing. I'm getting ready to close. Even Satan and all of his demons believe, but watch this. But the truest believers of Jesus Christ, own Jesus Christ, receive. That's the third level. The first level is that I believe. Woo, shall I tremble. Woo, I get to the point I believe. Woo. See, God is different than man. You know, if a man has power, a woman has power, they, a lot of time, they don't want to show you how much power they have unless they've got to bully you. Whoop you, KO you. You know how it is. You mess with me, you don't know who you mess with. I'm going to show you who you messing with. Why is the only way I can know your power is if you want to crush me like an ant? Why can't I know your power to pick me up? Masha Tabaya. That's what I love about Jesus. 
above men. That's what I love about the Lord. He's not just willing to show me his power through his wrath. He's not just willing to show me his power through his heart destruction. He's not just willing to show me his power. He don't withhold his glory and his power from me unless he's got to hurt me. You know, some folk don't want to show you any strength or ability they have unless, don't fool with me, I'll show you don't know what you who you playing with. I know I've got some witnesses out there. I know you done dealt with some people before, but the only time they was ready to show you they had some ability, some power. Come on, you in the city and you got pool, but you don't want to show your pool and get me a job. Come on, you on the job, you supervising, or you got favor with the supervisor, you work in HR. You don't want to show your, your power and ability and help me come up. But boy, if I was on the job and you want to fire me, you'll show me you got power. You want to show me your influence. Don't show your influence in the negative. Show it in the power. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. So Satan and his demons, they believe, they tremble. But the truest believers own Jesus the Christ receive the third level is receiving. First level is I'm believing. Second level is I'm knowing because I've now had some experiences with God. But the third level is receiving. Now watch it. How many of you today who've been saved for a little while now have stopped receiving? You don't want to stop receiving, my beloved brothers and sisters. You want to be receive every day. Every day you want to tell him, Lord, I receive. They used to sing a song, Lord, I believe, Lord, I believe all things are possible if you only believe, Lord, I, I receive, oh. Receive, oh, all things are possible if you only receive. <laughs> We've got to be willing to receive. The truest believers receive St. John chapter 1 verse 12. The Bible says, but as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God. Some of you who read other translation, it says right. I don't like the word right. I like the word power. He gave me more than just the right. The word power means deutimus, supernatural ability. To become the sons of God. He don't just give me the right. See, just believing, give me a right. Whosoever believeth in him should not perish. That give me the right. But if I if but if he give me the power, that means I get I start growing above the level where demons can just uh wreak havoc on my life. I start walking in the authority of the kingdom of God. I start walking in the power and authority that God has given me when I receive power. So the truest believers receive. They don't just believe. They don't just say, I believe God. No, I receive. Tell that sickness, no, you're going to get off my body. I'm going to receive from God what God says in the word I can have. I'm sick of you, sickness. <laughs> oh, God is waiting on some radical believers like that to start saying, you know what? I'm sick of my lack, my finance. I'm not going to be in financial lack. Always. I'm sick of you. Fooling with my bank account. I'm sick of barely paying my bill. God, I command, move, move your hand. Glory to God and navigate my life in the position it's supposed to be in. Whether it means a raise on the job. Whether it means a promotion on the job. Whether it means a better job. Whether it means the, my, my spouse come up. Whether it means somebody else in the house come up. Whatever you need to do, Lord, I need you. I'm ready for you to move. But listen, uh, uh, so Satan and his demons believe and they tremble, James 2, 19. But in John 1 and 12, true believers receive him and to as many as received him, to them he give the power to become. The power to become means he gives you supernatural ability to keep evolving. 
He gave my shatabasia mandiosa. That power to become means he give you supernatural ability to go deeper in Christ Jesus. Power to become means he give you supernatural ability to keep on transforming into the image of Christ. To keep on transforming into the glory of the Father. He give you power to become means he give you supernatural ability to keep on, my God, today getting stronger and stronger in the things of God. To keep on getting clearer and clearer in your understanding of the word of God. To power to become has a multitudinous of clarity and understanding, my beloved brothers and sisters. To them, to as many as received him, to them he gave the power to become. Glory to God. The power to become means that he give you supernatural ability, glory to God, hallelujah, to experience God. God on a level that you never have before. Anybody ready to go deeper? Ha <laughs> ha, shot. So now we understand Apostle Paul's question in Acts chapter 19, verses 1 through 6. When Paul met certain disciples, they were disciples. They were people that believed. They believed. They believed. Glory to God. He met certain disciples in Acts chapter 19, verses 1 through 6. He asked them, have you received the Holy Ghost? Since you, see, he, he said, listen, you believe, and, I, and you must know because you experienced uh, 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 some, 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 some change. You, 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 you got baptized. You say, what were you baptized in? We, we ain't heard about no Holy Ghost, man. We baptized the John. We go to the Baptist church. We baptized John. We Presbyterian. We, we Lutheran. Come on. We this, we that. He said, but have you received, have you gone to the third level? Have you gone to the third level? The third level is indicative of Christ rising on the third day. The third level is indicative of the third person, which is, who is the Holy Ghost. The third level, my God, today is indicative of the third heaven. Glory to God. The holies of holies. Hallelujah. Uh, Hebrew 10, 19 say, we have boldness to go into the holies of holies by the blood of Jesus. Hallelujah. That third level. Paul asked him, have you received since you believe? I'm asking you tonight, have you received since you believe? You believe. It's time for you to know. And many of you, listen, you've gone, I hear, I hear, I hear you, Holy Ghost. I hear in my I'm hearing the Holy Ghost say, many of you that are listening to me tonight, you have gone to the doctor for your sickness, for your ailment, and, and you've gone even to church, or you've called your prayer partner or prayer line, or, or you've gone to, to the altar and you've gotten prayer and you felt the Spirit of God touch you, but did you really receive it? When you felt it. The Bible said the woman with the issue of blood. She uh, touched the hem of his garment. The Bible says she felt in her body. Hallelujah. She believed it. She believed it. Because she stretched out to go know it. She believed it. That's the reason she went after him. So she could know it. And when she touched him. She knew. The Bible said. But then once she knew. She felt in her body. She received that. Ooh, I've been healed. I've been made whole. That's why when the Lord said, who touched me? The Bible says she came trembling. Remember the demons believe and tremble? She came back trembling and said, Lord, it was me. Oh, I believe. Masha Tabaya. Hallelujah. <laughs> I've got to call this getting sweet. He said, watch it. So watch it. Let me, let me give you a few, few nuggets here and I'm closing. Spiritual birth happens. John chapter 3, verse 3. 1 Corinthians 12, 13. At the point of really believing. Spirit of God comes on the inside of you. But spiritual empowerment comes. St. John 3 and 5. 2 Corinthians 3 and 6. The, the, the spirit of empowerment comes. When the Holy Ghost comes up on you. When you receive him. See at spiritual birth. The Holy Ghost comes in you. But, but when you want spiritual empowerment. The Holy Ghost come upon you. The spirit comes in at spiritual birth. When you're born again. You're saved. It's the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Title 3 and 5 tells us. It's the regeneration. The work of the Holy Ghost. Is to regenerate you. But you, you, you believe. I know the Lord saved. I know the Lord can do it. But have you experienced it? Have you received it? You say, I know the Lord can heal me, but have he healed you? Tell the Lord you're not satisfied with just knowing he can do it. 
What did Thomas say? Thomas said, listen, I know the Lord rolled, but I'm not going to be satisfied till I touch. I ain't going to believe it till I, I got to touch it for myself. You ought to have that type of attitude. Don't be talking about, Lord, I know you can heal me, but if you don't want, if you want me to just die like this, shamefully, that's okay. Uh-uh. You're the friend of God. Healing is the children's bread. Didn't Jesus tell the woman, the, the Syrophoenician woman that came to him trembling, talking about my daughter grievously lay home, vexed with a demon, and she going to die? And Jesus told the woman, it ain't right for me to give the children bread to dogs. And he, when he said dogs, it come from a Greek word that means all of those that are outside of the Jews, those that who are outside of believing that Yahweh was the true God. He was really saying to her, woman, it's not right for me to heal your daughter and you and your daughter don't even believe. Y'all don't receive the father. You don't receive me. You wasn't expecting me to come. The healing is the children bread. The spirit comes in at spiritual birth, the baptism of the Holy Ghost, but the spirit comes up on at spiritual empowerment, baptism are baptized with the Holy Ghost and fire. Luke 24, 49. Remember Jesus went in, the Bible says in John chapter 20, and he breathed on his disciples and said, receive the Holy Ghost. He was getting them ready. He told them you need to receive. He told them you need to receive. Watch it. They, they, they had believed. They began to follow him. Then they began to know. Because they saw Jesus start to do miracles. They were there. They were at the wedding feast of Cana. They were there when he opened blind Bartimaeus' eyes. They were there when he spit on the ground and put clay, made clay and put it in the boy's eyes, born blind from birth. They were there. My God, today when he told the woman, thou art loose. They were there when he told the man at the pool, take up your bed and walk. They were right there. When he cleansed the leper. They were there. My God today when he called Lazarus out of the tomb. They were there. They knew. They experienced. He had done something. But now he said you're going to have to receive. Receiving means that you're going to have to get to the level that you become Christ in the world. Oh my God. Oh my God. Oh my God. Receiving means that you're going to have to now become that imminent light that sit on a hill, that city that cannot be hid. Receiving means that now you're going to have to become the one who heals the sick. Receiving means now you're going to have to be the one to tell the devil to get out of town. Receiving means that now you're going to have to become that one, my beloved brother, my beloved sister. Somebody say, I'm looking for Jesus. You say, come here, let's pray. Let me, let me call him for you. You know how it is. When you, you, if you got a friend that's in power and somebody in trouble, and you know your friend can get them out because they'll do you a favor. You say, don't worry about it, baby. Let me call my friend. <laughs> I'm a friend of God. Glory to God. I'm, I've been justified because my work of faith. My shatabaya. Hallelujah. I'm not just a talker. You know, a lot of folk can talk a good game. A lot of folk, a mouth, pair of lips can say anything, but, but the Bible said that by our faith at work, by our works of faith, if you will, we're justified. So I can call my friend for you. Glory to God. So when people are looking for Jesus, when people are looking for healing in their body, when people are looking for deliverance from demons and depression, from oppression of the devil, and people are, are being tormented by fear, people right by you going through all type of stuff, they can be delivered. If you become that Christ in the world, Satan, you're defeated and God is exalted. So grow past just believing, my beloved brothers and sisters. Grow, G-R-O-W, past just believing and go on upward into receiving. In John chapter 11, as I close, uh, there's a story about one named Lazarus. The Bible says that uh, Jesus received, I don't know if they sent somebody, I think in those days, according to biblical history, they had runners. They didn't have mailmen. They didn't have uh, post offices. They didn't have telegraphs. They didn't have telephones, cell phone. Couldn't nobody text him. So they sent somebody to tell Jesus, go find him and tell him that his friend Lazarus is sick unto death. Jesus said, I'm glad for y'all's sake that he's sick unto death because you need to know God has the power to raise the dead. 
He is that God, Romans 4, 17 says, who quickeneth the dead and calleth those things that be not as though they were. So the Bible says from verses 23 through 27, uh, uh, he told, when, when, when he got there, Martha told him, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would have never died. It's your fault. You could have fixed this. You left me for a moment. Jesus said, girl, don't worry about it. You're going to see your brother again. Well, I know whatever you ask the Father, he'll give it to you. And, and I know the Bible. I know I'm going to see him in the resurrection of the last day. Jesus said, girl, Lord, have mercy. You don't even realize who you're talking to. I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth on me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And if he believe on me and he's alive, he'll never die. Masha Tabaya. Hallelujah. So watch it. When you get down to verse 40 through 45, Jesus tells her, girl, did not I tell you that if you believe, you'll see the glory of God? So here's our closing. The demons in hell believe and they tremble. But watch it. The difference in you and the demons is because the demons believe, but the demons won't receive. Moreover, the demons believe and tremble, but the demons cannot receive. Watch it. The demons believe, but the demons can't even know. You're walking many levels above devils. Oh, my glory. Oh, that's a powerful prophetic word. I said, you, my beloved sisters, you, my beloved brothers, are walking above many devils. The devils believe, but the devils can't know. You know the mysteries of God. You got a holy Bible to read. You got a pastor to teach you and preach to you. You got a church to go to and fellowship with other believers. You got a mind where you could read the Bible for yourself. Glory to God. You got apostles and prophets and evangelists, pastors and teachers in your reach. My God, today you can know. The devils believe, but they can't know. But above all, the devils believe, but they can't receive. You can receive. Jesus told her, did not I tell you that if you believe, you'll see the glory of God? Mere believing is Jesus, in Jesus stops at conversion, but believing on Jesus moves at empowerment. Let us go higher. Let us go deeper. I hope I said something today that has blessed you. I, oh, I hope I said something today that has empowered you. Take this video. Share it on your timeline. Share it in your groups. I know group wild. I'm going to have to do something special for y'all to make sure that you're able to share it. I'm going to tag it with a link. Give me a few minutes and I'm going to stick a link on there. Group wild women of the world so you'll be able to share it on your page. All you got to do is swipe that link and just tap in and you're going to have it done. Thank God for you. Thank God that you came to spend this day uh, with the apostle this little moment. Lord, I believe. Lord, I believe all things are possible if you only believe. Lord, I receive. Oh, 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 Lord, oh, Lord. Lord, I receive, yeah, yeah. I know all things are possible oh, because of Lord I, I, I receive Lord I receive Lord I receive oh, oh, oh things are possible, Lord, I receive, maybe you need healing in your body, go on and receive it right now, lift those hands and tell him, Lord, I receive, how you out of my soul, see it ain't about you totally understanding everything to the point, to the T, it's just about, Lord, I receive, go on and receive your healing, go on and receive your, ah, hey, my shataba, hallelujah, yeah. All things are possible. Yes, it is. Lord, I receive. I don't know what kind of breakthrough you're needing tonight, but tell him, Lord, I receive my breakthrough. Yes. Tell him, Lord, I receive.
All things are possible for me because Lord, I receive. Hallelujah. Go on and receive it tonight. Ah, oh, hey, shout, my seer. Hallelujah. Lord, I receive. Lord, I receive. I don't know what you're needing tonight. Ah, oh, Masha Tabasia. Hallelujah. Let him lift that heavy burden. All things are possible because, Lord, I, I receive. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to you. Hey, hey. Hallelujah. Glory, glory, glory. Glory to your wonderful name. Thank you, Jesus. That's my time. Ah, hey, Masha Taba. Hallelujah. Hey, hallelujah. Glory to God. I just felt, ah, hey, my God. I just felt somebody get a touch. I just felt, ah, my God. Higher than my side, higher than my soul. Hallelujah. I just felt somebody get a miracle. I just felt somebody get their breakthrough. My God, today. Hallelujah. I don't know who it is, but somebody just received your miracle. Somebody just got your breakthrough. Somebody just got your touch. Hallelujah. Just receive it. Just receive it, just receive it, just receive it, just receive it. Hallelujah, glory to God. Hallelujah, it's a new day. You've got a new opportunity. Hallelujah, forget about yesterday's failure. Forget about yesterday's faltering. Forget about yesterday's flaws. Forget about yesterday's, oh my God, mistakes. Forget about yesterday's weakness. Forget about yesterday's shortcoming. Forget about yesterday. Ah, oh, hey, my shataba. Hallelujah. Oh, my God. The Today, it's a new day. Hallelujah. Glory to God. It's a fresh anointing. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. His compassions are new every morning. Hallelujah. Great is his faithfulness. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Go on and receive it right now. Hallelujah. Thank you. Hey. Masha Tabaya. No, no, no. Moho Shataba. Higher than a maso. Hey. Higher than a manadiasia. My God. I just feel. Masha Tabaya. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I feel. Hey. My God, I just felt somebody get their breakthrough. I just felt somebody get their touch. My God, today, somebody just got a move of God in your life. Hallelujah. Lift those hands and tell him, Lord, I thank you. Lord, I believe. Tell the Lord, I receive it. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Give God praise. Give him glory. Give God dominion. Hallelujah. Give him your adoration. Tell him, Lord, I love you. Lord, I adore you. Lord, you're wonderful. Lord, you're marvelous. Lord, you're incredible. Hallelujah. Nobody like you. Tell him, Lord, I believe. It. Well, thank you, my beloved brothers and sisters. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank, thank you, thank you, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. My God, I'm trying to cut. Ah, my sha, my sia. I'm trying to cut. Hey, my sha ta ta ba ha, ita ta ta ba ha, ita ndo 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 ho sha ta ba ha ya. Mundi di 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 ku u ta 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 ba ha. Eh, sha ta 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 ba ha. Eh, ya na 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 ha ya. Mundu di 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 ku ta 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 ba ho shi ta ha. High blood pressure is being ah ita ta 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 ba ha. Eh, ta 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 ba ha. High blood pressure is being consumed right now. In the name of Jesus, the Holy Ghost just said high blood pressure is being healed right now. In the mighty name of Jesus, I see somebody breaking out in a profuse sweat. Ha, ma sha ta bu, i sha ta ba ha, i ka ta ta bu hu shi. I don't know who I'm talking to, but that person that you're breaking out right now in a sweat, the Lord told me to tell you that he's healing your Ah, hey, my shataba, aba shatana no mo shataba, i ta ta no shi i ku shi. I hear God saying, oh, my mama mama mo shatata da da ba ha ya. Ah, 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 hey, 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 my shaha, my God, it is oh shia. I hear you, Holy Ghost. God just said, tell somebody your diabetes. Hallelujah, he's being healed. Diabetes is being healed right now in the mighty name of Jesus. Diabetes is being healed right now in the name. I hear God saying you've been concerned, you've been afraid, you've been worried because you've had some family members that have suffered terribly behind diabetes. You've seen some amputees, you've seen some terrible things happen and you've been afraid because you were told it was hereditary. The Holy Ghost said it's being cut off right now. Lift your hands, lift your hands, lift your hands and tell him, Lord, I receive it. Lift your hands and tell him, Lord, I thank you. Lift your, ah, my Shataba, I hear God saying somebody just got your financial breakthrough. I don't know what it is. Hi,
receive it. Just receive it. Just lift your hands while the presence of God is flowing. Just lift your hands and tell him, Lord, I receive it. Just tell him, Lord, I receive it. Hey, my, 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 my. Okay, I hear you. I hear you. I hear you. Somebody ask God specifically. You just now ask God. God, what about, what about my interview? What about my interview? God said, get ready because the position is yours. God said, get ready. The opportunity is yours. I don't know who I'm talking to, but you just said while we were praying and praising God, you just said, God, why come the man of God didn't talk about that position I'm trying to get? That opportunity. I actually see a person that's trying to get an acting position. I see a person trying to get an acting position. God said the position is yours. Give him praise. Give him glory. Hallelujah. Commit yourself to some church somewhere. If you're already committed to church, tell God, if you give me the position, I'll give the church my tithe. Hallelujah. The position is yours. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Tell the Lord you receive it. Bless his wonderful name. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you so much for taking time out of your busy schedule to spend a little time with your brother. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I thank God for being so sweet. He's sweet, I know. Oh, that old song said he's sweet, I know. Storm clouds may ride and strong winds may blow. But I can tell the world wherever I go that I found a Savior and he is sweet. Hallelujah. <laughs> Woo! Sha! My God, he's sweet. Woo! If my friend Kirk Franklin was here tonight, he'd tell you every day with Jesus. Get sweeter than the day before. My God, today. So let us go higher in the things of God. Let us go deeper in Christ. Let us go from believing to knowing and from knowing to receiving. For you are the light of the world, my beloved brothers and sisters. You are a city sit on a hill that cannot be hid. You are what the world is looking for. You are the demonstration of the love of God that somebody's longing for, somebody's yearning for. They'll never know until they meet you. You're that epistle written unto men. You're a Bible that some folk refuse to pick up. Hallelujah, glory to God. God bless you, grace and peace. Remember to pray for me, and I'm going to pray for you. And we know God is already in due process of changing things in our favor. Amen. Amen. That's my time. God bless you. God keep you. That is our prayer. I believe. Hallelujah. Glory to God.